You've got everything else picked out for your build, but you're confused about the power supply. How many watts do you need? What's the difference between gold, bronze, and platinum ratings? Can you buy any power supply or does build quality matter? Don't worry, we're gonna go through all this and more, including specific product recommendations, coming right up. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Today we're gonna to go over what has to be one of the absolutely most confusing things about putting together your PC build, which is what power supply do you need? How many watts? Uh, what's the 80 plus gold mean? Does it matter if you buy whatever? Is it gonna blow up and explode your build? We're gonna go through all of this and we're gonna dispel a lot of the misconceptions about this and get you from where you're at now to specific product recommendations so you can buy something coming out of this video and feel really, really confident about it. Of course, that's what this channel is all about. It's about mashing down the technical details to give you the best price to performance in your builds. If that's the kind of content you want more of and you want to support, remember to like the video, subscribe, and click the bell icon. It really does make a big difference to the channel as we grow, and it's a free way for you to support us and get what you need. So with that, let's jump right into it. Let's go over some power supply basics. The first thing to know is that most companies that sell the power supplies aren't the ones manufacturing it. So when you get something that looks like this, you might think that EVGA has manufactured this. Well, guess what? They haven't, they've bought it from another manufacturer. So I would tell you, forget the brand names, focus in on the particular unit that you're looking for and focus in on the reviews of that unit. And we'll get to that in a second. Secondly, there are two main sizes for power supplies. The first size is ATX size. That's gonna cover 95% of you that are gonna build in an ATX case. Then of course there are SFX sized power supplies. Those are for small form factor builds, ITX cases. If you don't know, your case manufacturer will have specs and they will specify what size power supply fits in their case. I'm gonna guess more often than not, unless it's a small form factor, it's gonna be an ATX size case. Then there are three different types of power supplies to buy. The first one is fully modular. That means it doesn't come with any cables pre-attached to it. You plug them in to the side. You can see that right there. The second one is semi-modular. This comes with the core cables already hardwired and the rest of them you can plug in. And the core cables are typically like the 20 plus four pin or often referred to the 24 pin uh, power cable for the motherboard. The four plus four pin often referred to as the eight pin power connector for the CPU sometimes the PCIe cables, but really it's the core stuff. Then of course there are the non-modular power supplies that just come with a big wad of cables on them. Now listen, if it were up to me, I would buy fully modular every single time. Semi-modular is also good. It just helps keep the builds clean, but it doesn't impact the performance. So if you wanna go ahead and buy a non-modular power supply, go right ahead, you'll just have a little extra cable management to do. But on a super cheap build, maybe $10, $15 makes a difference and that might help you out. So how do you determine how many watts you need? This is actually probably the easiest part of buying a power supply and I'm gonna show you how. You're gonna put your build in a PC part picker, just like this one right here. And I'm not sponsored by them, but they're a wonderful tool. They're gonna tell you the effectively kind of the max draw if you wanna think about it that way right here. And if you click on it, it'll tell you, you know, for per each component, but we just want to look at that total number, which for us is just about 300 watts. So we're going to take that number and we're actually going to size our power supply up by 50%. So we're going to multiply 300 times 1.5. That is, use your calculator if you got to, that's right, 450 watts. That's the smallest power supply we want. Now we could get a 500 watt, six, you know, 550, that would be fine. But we want somewhere in that neighborhood of 450 watts or higher. Okay, so what about all this efficiency rating stuff? So 80 plus is a certification done by a third party that takes the power supply and actually tests it. It tests it at different load factors on the power supply to determine how efficient is this power supply. And it has to be at least 80% at three different test points, typically 20, 50, and 100% in order for it to get 80 plus 
white. Most of the power supplies you're going to find that are higher quality are going to be bronze rated or better, and most of the really good ones are going to be gold, platinum, or titanium. However, don't think for a second that just because you buy a gold rated unit, it means it's better than a bronze rated unit. That's not necessarily the case. It could be that a bronze rated unit has much better internal components and protections than that gold rated unit. So we'll talk in a second about how to determine the build quality. But for right now, the percentage difference between these is very small. You will not see most of the energy savings in terms of real dollars. If you were buying a thousand systems or a hundred systems, maybe you would, and maybe it would make a difference between bronze and gold. I would just say, get something at least bronze rated, and you're going to find that as you go into higher and higher quality, they're automatically going to be gold, uh, platinum, or titanium. But don't fret the overall efficiency rating as long as you get something that's bronze or better. This brings us to the most important thing to talk about, which is build quality of the power supply. Now, if you can't tell the build quality from the 80 plus certification, gold, bronze, whatever, and you can't just tell by how many watts it's going to give you, how the heck do you tell? Well, the reality is that you and me can't. We can't tell just by looking at a unit. We could tear it apart and take a look, but unless you're an electrical engineer or really understand power supplies, you're probably not going to glean much from that. So what goes into build quality? Well, number one is the quality of the components themselves. These are the capacitors. Um, are they high quality? Are they crappy? They're going to blow up. The second thing that goes into it are the protections. What do I mean by protections? Well, there are built-in protections in your power supply, hopefully, that will prevent things going wrong and going badly when something gets out of whack. And they include things like over power protection, over temperature protection, under volt protection, and just a number of others. The way that most of us tell this is by looking at reviews. And I'm going to give you a dead simple site right now in order to do that. This is the PSU tier list over at Linus Tech Tips forums under PSUs. This is a community developed and maintained list where they've developed a methodology for build quality. I strongly recommend that you use this and I will include a link to this down in the description. And I want to take this opportunity to a big shout out to everybody who works on this and maintains it because without it, most of us would be absolutely lost. There's three different tiers in here that I want you to focus on because they break them out into tiers. Each tier has a certain requirement in terms of the protections that are required, in terms of the, the ripple on the voltage, all kinds of different things that increase the quality of the PSU unit. So for super budget systems, we're actually going to scroll all the way down here and you are going to use something out of tier C. Anything below this is garbage or for a system that does not have a dedicated GPU. But if you are putting together a super cheap gaming system that has a dedicated GPU, you're going to use something out of tier C. And you can see that they've listed it by manufacturer here, and then they've listed here the units. So you can quickly search by manufacturer name, jump down each tier, and you can find the unit that you're looking for. Tier B is going to be good for mid-range systems. This is systems probably all the way up to the latest graphics cards that we're using now, uh, just below that. And finally, Tier A is what I would recommend if you're going to heavily overclock your system or if you're using one of the fancy new RX 6800, X, uh, 6800 or RTX 3070 or better graphics cards or you're using a, a, a CPU that you know is going to suck up a lot of power like an i9-10900K. So you're going to come here and it's really simple to search. So if you know what power supply you're looking for, you can literally just use the control F feature in Google Chrome or your browser and just type in what you want to find. So if I want to find a Seasonic uh, unit, I just type in Seasonic and it'll pull up. It starts with tier A and I can just keep clicking down and clicking down and clicking down until I find the unit that I'm looking for. It's really that simple to use. Now there are a lot of abbreviations in here, so it might take you a little while, but trust me, the time is worth it. All right, now let's put all our knowledge together here and actually get a power supply. So we're back to our budget build here with our four core uh, 
processor and RX 570 build. This is a super budget build. I think this is like a $530 build. So we're gonna find something in tier C. We remember that 300 watts is what PC part picker, after we put all of our parts in, is telling us that this build is gonna draw. We're gonna multiply that by 1.5, so that's gonna give us 450 watts. We're now gonna come here in PC part picker, and under the power supply, we're gonna add a power supply. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for something that is bronze rated or better, and 450 watts or better. Now, do we care about modular, semi-modular? If we do, we can, we can put that in here, but for budget system like this, we don't care because we just want cheap, right? So we're gonna sort from lowest to highest. We're gonna find a couple of units in here. One we're gonna find is EVGA BR. This is not a bad power supply. It is, however, listed under the units that they don't have all the information on for tier C. So let's just say we wanted to search this one though, EVGA BR. This is the uh, 450 watt version. We're gonna go over to the Linus T uh, Tech PSU cultist list and we're gonna hit control F and we're gonna pull up EVGA. Now uh, we'll start, uh, whoops, I gotta spell that right, EVGA. We're gonna start all the way at the top and work our way down. So it's not a supernova, it's none of these right here, and this is the obviously tier A. It's none of these right here. We're gonna keep going down. It's none of these here in tier B. We're gonna keep going down. None of these here in tier B under the units they don't have a lot of information on. Going down to tier C. Here's the tier C for low, low priority units or where they don't have a ton of extra information, and it is listed right here. This is a tier C, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fret pulling a, a unit out of here. If you can pull a unit that's not out of here, that's great. So maybe we go back and decide, okay, well, that's not the unit we, that we want to get. And we can go down and we can keep checking these units until we find one we like. One we're going to find that we like is the Corsair CX. This is going to, this unit here is going to appear on the C list, not on the regular C list. 450 watt power supply. This is exactly what we need for our build. We're just gonna go ahead and add it. It's a cheap unit. And there we go. We've put all of our knowledge together. Now, if we had a higher end build, like a, you know, a RTX 3080 build or something like that, we would then wanna get a, a power supply that was at least in the A tier. So in order to make this easier on ourselves, instead of just searching for units that are bronze rated or better, because the higher quality units are gonna be automatically gold because they're gonna cost more. Um, so why not make them gold? We're gonna get rid of the bronze and we'd search using this methodology. And then it'll just cut out some of the stuff that we have to get rid of as we search. Now this will take a while, I'm not gonna to lie to you, but you will be able to find good units. And now I wanna give you a couple of units down in the description at each tier, tier A, tier B, and tier C that are good rated units at different power sizes. I'm gonna include them down there. You don't have to necessarily search for this. You could just use those links as well because I wanna make sure that you walk away from this video with something that you can buy right now. If you got value out of this video, please remember to give it a like. And of course, if this is the kind of content that you want, content that mashes down all the technical details to give you the best price to performance in your builds, then absolutely subscribe and click the bell icon and I'll catch you on the next one.